I think we're on the verge of some amazing things happening. Um, if you look back at history, there have been a few what I'll call discontinuities in history. We go back and look at something like the printing press. Prior to Gutenberg and the printing press, only the elites and the you know like priests of the world had access to written material. After the printing press, a normal human, normal mortal could aspire to learn to read and have a book. Though it was still expensive and still hard to get. Uh, it's not that reading, writing, and books changed, it's just the availability changed, and it was such a big change that it was a change in kind, not just in degree. I think today's modern communications and the internet and the ability to exchange ideas is a similar discontinuity. I mean, there's that email group called A Rocket for advanced rocketry or experimental rocketry that's got you know, 200, 300 people from all over the planet working on similar stuff. You know, I can have a legitimate conversation about what coatings don't melt at rocket temperatures and get half a dozen responses and carry on an exchange. Well, no one community in the country would have enough people with that level of interest to participate in a group or if they did, it would be the monthly Rocket Club meeting as opposed to the you know, 32 times daily emails from people sharing things. And so I think this ability for people of like interest to share information and their passion will be incredibly empowering. I think it's going to be very destructive to some of the traditional, I want to say corporate or development structures because they can't compete. But uh, long term, I think it was probably the most empowering thing that's happened to, to us humans in a long time. Uh, this stainless one is sort of a proof of concept. Uh, the real flight weight one will be aluminum, like this one's aluminum. Again, peroxide goes in here, comes up, comes out little holes in here. Uh, it's, you know, this is hollow, it's very light. Uh, it's hollow and then the fuel comes in this other, this other path. Um, again, there will be stainless screen or s silver coated or solid silver screens in here for peroxide decomposition. No, the aluminum one is also 3D printed? Yes. Um, the two companies I know of who do this in the United States are Morris Technologies and uh, GPI Prototype. One of these was made by each of the two vendors. Uh, they both use a machine. Uh, by EOS Industries, and the way it works is you have a plate, you put a layer of powder on it of the metal you're making it, and the laser melts the outline of what you're making. The plate goes down a thousandth of an inch, they recoat it with powder, melt down the next layer and keep going as they build up the, build up the motor layer by layer until it's done. It's approximately 80% as strong as solid metal of the same type. And the advantage of doing it this way as opposed to solid metal? Well, A, it's really hard to make something really hollow with solid metal. You'd have to make it as two pieces and weld them together. Like this, this one was made of multiple pieces and welded together. Uh, that's a failed prototype. It's also very light because if I were to make it out of multiple pieces and weld it, each of the pieces I made would have to have a heavy enough seam to actually weld. And this, you know, the, the walls are 40 thousandths thick, 40 thousandths of an inch. It's really light. I mean, it, the, connect, the, the fitting I have screwed on to protect the threads weighs 50% as much as the motor. So this one feels a lot heavier because it's on a test stand. So here I have it bolted to a sanitary fitting just as an easy way to close the motor for testing. And it's on a big steel piece and there's a uh, load cell here that measures the amount of thrust. This moves. And this bolt pattern matches the test stand we have out at the Friends of Amateur Rocketry. So. So what is the advantage of, of this rocket motor over more conventional design? Uh, For one, you send them a CAD file and what comes back is a printed motor. For myself personally, where I don't really count my labor as a cost yet, uh, it's more expensive than building, you know, spending hundreds of hours on the machine, you know, machining little fine details. But by any realistic accounting of time, it's probably lower cost for building a one-off like this than, uh, you know, than doing it the old-fashioned way. 
and there are shapes and features you just plain cannot manufacture by any other means. Now one of the limitations is the build volume in this particular machine is 9 by 9 by 10 or, or 9 by 9 by 8. So you, you have a very limited build volume. So that's my show and tell for the day. Perhaps even three. Okay, we are very close to flight here. You, now you hear an air horn being signaled by the team. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, how about that, ladies and gentlemen? The Blue Ball, what an amazing vehicle. A rocket built by a father and son, a two-person team, just to complete an amazing flight. It does appear to have met uh, the requirements for the first of two legs of the Northrop Grumman Lunar Lander Challenge. Came down to a bit of a rough landing there, uh, but is still uh, standing. Does appear to be intact, at least from what we can see from here. What an absolutely fantastic flight.